So you have a que question about... Yeah. What, what is your, do you have your client go to the bank? And, I mean, I wish they could just pull up their statement from online, like most people can, but these guys actually go to the bank, have them write out a letter, sign it. With their well, I mean, if, they, if the bank does online banking, they can still do that. They don't. They don't do that. They just, I mean, well, maybe as investors, to embrace technology and learn. Yeah. Please call pre qualify. Well, and that's actually one of the things we were just going to talk about was negotiation process and how much time do you give them to respond? And we were just touching on that. Now, Huntington Bank will actually send an email with a letter to kind of counteract that. We don't know who they are, or you took a fake picture, or you did Photoshop. In the business division, when I got a, a business line of credit, the bank actually left me out of the whole loop so that that concept wouldn't happen. My banker sent the company a direct email from his email, Huntington email, with a letter attached on it that said, you know, the, they have been in good standing and yada, yada, whatever. Now, I don't know if that bank will do that or how often you want to do it or how many times. Um, but Huntington's bank will do that for me. So what do you suggest on, like, every, like, if this one gets rejected, then I know I've got to, you know, what, every couple of weeks maybe have them give me an updated one? Yeah, probably. I would say uh, you wouldn't want your letter to go more than 30 days. Oh, yeah. Okay. Whatever month you're in, you should have a letter dated that month. Every three weeks or so. Yeah. yeah. No. The other thing that I personally do with letters is I always have my guy give me three letters. One at a price, one at another price, and one at another price. Yeah. Because I don't want to put an offer in on 120 with a letter saying that we have the availability for 200. Yeah. I always don't want to, even though I understand the whole concept that we're only going to pay what we're going to pay, but I still don't want them to have the ability to think that we have that ability to do that. So it, now what you do is you're starting to get into, I want one every month and I want three every month. I want one at 90, one at 120, and one at 150. The other way around it is to do exactly what David just said, is to cash close in 10 days. You know, now I don't need, you. some people still want to see a, a letter or a bank statement, but now you don't have to worry about all that pre-approval stuff. I understand that some investors can't do that. <clears throat> Did I tell you about the show Billions? When the guy made the offer on the house, $63 million, I'll close tomorrow. No? Yeah. Or were you here? Yeah, it was $85 million. He offered $63. I'll close tomorrow, cash. Yeah. So, you know, you can save yourself a couple twenty million if you can pay in cash. <laughs> Going back to the speculation of what's real and what isn't, we got we got an offer on an investment property today. Now the agent has been telling us for two weeks that we have this offer coming. And See, never tell your client. Well no, we didn't tell her. Yeah. Nothing. Seven days. Nothing. So she, John called today and said, hey, listen, we haven't got anything. So, you know, if you sent it, we apologize. We checked the scam. We checked everything. 
Got the offer today with a $45,000 discount off the price. They wanted the seller to pay part of the closing cost, and it's all based contingent on whether they could get a line of credit on their home equity. So tell me they're not fishing. Yeah. Sure it's not one of Barb's clients? Because she was just saying the other day that they were writing everything at thirty and 40000 below the list price. Those are called thieves. Yeah. We got 7000 apart, and my client said no. Yeah. Well, at some point, we talk about that, the acceptance or the rejection and the cap. Obviously, remember the counter is a legal rejection, but you want to get to a point where you can accept, but occasionally you will counter, 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 and never get there. And that, to me, is the most disheartening one. If I can get my buyer to at least make an offer, or your buyer to make an offer on my listing, I know that probably 80, 85% of the time, we can come to a deal. It, you know, it's that initial hurdle of that first one. However, there is that 15 to 20 percent of sometimes even when they write an offer, you know, that they just, like you said, come in 45 under and they want closing and then they're, okay, dude, we are so far apart. Um, I could be wrong, but I think that if she really, truly loved it and it was the right one for her, she would have accepted that. That's what I think. Yeah. I think So are you going to counter that, Dave, and I don't want to give away anything in the middle of a deal? Or is that, you think, is that so much that your client just initially is not? We told, we told the client we had an offer in writing because we were looking at it. We gave them an idea of what they were looking at, and they wanted us to run numbers at three different levels. So we assume she's going to counter. Right. Yeah, I had a, I, I've had, I had one the other day, it's the first time in a long time, and I kind of knew when I wrote the offer, um, you know a fellow restauranteur that you and I both know that enjoys cigars, yes, sir. we uh, were looking at a space to lease, and they were looking at $25 a square foot, which I think is on the high side for where it's at. My client offered $12 a square foot and wanted them to actually give him three months of free rent up front. This is one of those situations where you're with your client, like we talked about the other day, how we're supposed to represent our client and exercise reasonable skill and care, and then also slap him in the head because you, I know that's not going to happen. It's the first time in a long time we actually got no response and to this date have never gotten a response. And I literally called the other agent. I did what I did, told you I did. Sent the offer over in writing. Called him and said, we sent you an offer. A couple days later, sent another email. A couple days after that, left a voicemail. It's now been a month since that offer, and I've never heard another word from him. So what's the old saying about silence speaks louder than words? I think we got our answer. But it's the first time in a long time that I've not had an offer at least... At least they could have called back and told us to kiss her butt. You know. The first one I ever submitted, it was that way. But it was like, I think it was a $25,000 property, and it was offered like eighteen, And they just never came back. Well, that's, see, that's, that's, I guess, is not bad to me. I mean, we're, we offered 48% of the, the price. Well, there's room there to at least come back yeah. or something. Yeah. I kind of expected it to be somewhere in that 18 to $19 a square foot. I never thought that they would not at least counter, especially since they know who this guy is. I mean, he's fairly well known in the restaurant industry, has a successful restaurant. It's not like he's a startup. So they knew who he was. They met him because we all met at the spot and walked around and talked. So I thought they would at least come back with a counter, but they never did. And to date, never have. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, it's the number one complaint in either one of our industries, but I think the commercial, because it's more business, which is the good side to that, 
and the bad side. You know, when, when I teach the commercial, one of the things I tell them is the reason I like commercial, no weekends, no after 5 p.m. Because it's a business concept. The downside to that, no weekends, no 5 p.m. So, I mean, you call an agent at 435 or 445, they're out of the office. And we're in the residential world, oh, we've got a receptionist. She's going to ring your phone and call you, and you're sitting in the movie, and you're going to answer the phone. They don't do that in the commercial world. So that's the good thing about it, but it also plays the bad thing. Um, I told you guys that deal that I closed a couple, what, in 2010, four of the weeks that we were in negotiation, we did nothing because of vacations. I was gone one week, the client was gone one week, the banker was gone two weeks. And we just literally said, we are not going to have any conversation with the banker because he's gone. And we just waited. And they accepted that because it was a business thing. All right. <clears throat> the hair on the deal thing, back to what we were talking about. You know, how much hair do you want to put on the deal? To me, that dictates the response time. And it can, if you get something that's real funky, like you said, subjected to we getting approval on the line of credit, you know, you may have to give a response time. How much response time were you given on that? See, 48 hours to me is awful short. Because to me, the initial knee-jerk reaction would be no. Unless we have time to sit down and run the numbers at that price and realize how long it's going to be off the market, and we may need three or four days. Well, and that's the one thing we explained to her. And I said, look, I, you know I knew, and she goes, yeah, but I'm going to listen to you because I know you've been doing this for a long time. And I said, the problem that I see is how much time are we going to give them to get their finances together? Yeah. Well, that's true, the capability to buy. But one step prior to that is what I'm talking is how long do you actually need to determine that answer? And that's what I'm saying. The more hair that deal has to have on it where you have to think about, geez, how long are we going to be off? Are they really buyers? What are the chances? I may need a day to think that through. And if you're only given 24 hours, you may not. Like you said on the other side of that coin, cash deal closed tomorrow, like in that example in that, TV series. That's a pretty persuasive closing argument that it's cash, no contingencies, closed tomorrow. You can get away with a lot of space, you know, 80% offer, no contingencies, I'm closing tomorrow. And here's the cash, here's my bank account, let's do the deal. As opposed to, we want 45 grand off, we want a slow close, we want you to pay for this, and then, ooh, no, I'm not doing it. So just letting the idea of the counter offer and the time that they are to respond uh, makes a difference in the actual, what we call, like I said, the hair on the deal. Um, we all remember the story I had in class of when is acceptance considered acceptance? What's it mean when accept? What's the key word for acceptance? <clears throat> remember... Chief Justice Potter Stewart's comment, I can't define pornography, but I know it when I see it. What's acceptance mean? Both sides have to know. All right? The acceptance means both parties have to know. Not just me. I have to have my client sign the purchase agreement saying we accept the offer, but I also have to get it back to the buyer side so that they know that we accepted the offer. And if you guys remember, one of the three things that creates a, a commission, got to be licensed, got to be for real estate, and both sides have to know because that's the definition of acceptance. Both sides have to know that you're getting an offer. You can let the offer expire, which is another way of rejection. What's that called? The pocket veto? Where you don't say no, you just don't say yes in time. You can do that, and that's kind of what I was just explaining to you happened to our guy. We put the offer in, gave him four days to respond. Okay, he's 30 days. I'm assuming that they're not going to respond, and his response was just blowing through the deadline. All right? 
Don't forget you got confidentiality issues. You're a listing agent and you lose that listing, remember the confidentiality stays. So does accounting. So you've got issues with your confident confidentiality you got to be careful about not using that. And <clears throat> that was, this is the one, Dave, we were talking about this last time, where the agent listed it and then lost the listing. The new agent came in and didn't put the the disclosure and the other agent called and said, hey, and he was suing under this uh, section one, number 10, which was the confidentiality. You know, you are not allowed to do that. When does an offer become a contract? Becomes a contract when it's accepted. So that, that's pretty simple. <clears throat> 